Thank you for tuning in to part two of our series. My name is Nadine, and I'm the Special Collections Librarian at the Newark Public Library here in Newark, New Jersey. Last week, you learned a little bit about our collection. In case you missed it, please check out the library's YouTube or Facebook pages for the recording of part one. Today, we'll learn more about some of the key poster artists from Puerto Rico, and I will show you several examples of wonderful artwork in our collection. Let's start with Lorenzo Homar because the library has an incredible collection of his works. The Newark Public Library owns more works by Homar than by any other artist from Puerto Rico. Homar, who is a painter, printmaker, and teacher, is one of the most important figures of the generation of the 50s. Homar was born in San Juan in 1913. His father was a film distributor and his mother was a pianist. Homar moved to New York when he was very young and studied gymnastics and acrobatics. He later studied at the Art Students League and at the Pratt Institute. He worked for 10 years as a jewelry designer at Cartier while he studied painting and printmaking at the School of Brooklyn Museum of Art. And he also worked as an acrobat. Homar enlisted and served in World War II, during which time he was wounded and received a Purple Heart. On his return to Puerto Rico in 1950, Homar co-founded the Center for Puerto Rican Art. From 1951 to 1956, he worked as a graphic artist and director of the graphic section of the División de Educación a la Comunidad, de VEDCO, and in 1957 organized a graphic arts workshop at the Instituto de Cultura Puertorriqueña, which he directed until 1973. His painstaking print technique is paralleled in his painting, both of which are done in a realistic style characterized by the precision of color and line. Homar died in 2004. Here we see an example of one of Homar's works showing his precise calligraphy skills. And here is a poster Homar designed for the third biennial of Latin American drawings, which took place in San Juan in 1974. Pay attention to the layout and the topography in this image. As mentioned in part one of this series, artists created posters to advertise their own exhibitions as well as shows for their colleagues. This softer piece from 1978 has a clever design and includes a profile of Homar's self-portrait within a frame. I already showed this image in part one, but wanted to bring it up again so that we could compare Homar's mastery of graphic design as we continue to look at additional examples of his works. In 1979, Homar designed a series of posters for the Pan American Games, which took place in San Juan, and we have many of those. His images included soccer, judo, tennis, and other sports that were played during this big event. Here is a colorful work designed almost like a quilt with different images and letters represented on the grid which together create an image publicizing an artisan's fair which took place in 1966. And this one in black and white promotes a show of woodcuts by fellow artist Orlando Salgado. Note the color contrast, and since the exhibit was taking place at the Casa del Libro, the image itself resembles an open book. In this last example by Homar, take a look at the lettering that is used to promote a ballet performance. Just like the dance, the typography was designed in a way so that it appears to be moving. Rafael Tufino was a painter, draftsman, graphic artist, muralist, and illustrator. Of Puerto Rican parents, Tufino was born in Brooklyn, but lived in Puerto Rico since childhood. He studied printmaking and mural technique at the Escuela Nacional de Artes Plásticas, Academia de San Carlos in Mexico City. In 1950, he, Lorenzo Omar, and Jose A. Torres Martino co-founded the Center for Puerto Rican Art. Tefina was known as the painter of the people, and he also worked at the Graphic Arts Workshop of the Institute of Puerto Rican Culture, which he directed in 1967. Tufino was one of the seminal figures of the 50s generation of Puerto Rican artists and, with Lorenzo Omar and Carlos Raquel Rivera, was one of the foremost practitioners of Puerto Rican printmaking. Although he favored a figurative style for much of his work, he explored other techniques and delved into pure abstraction, 
but always with the most painstaking attention to design and he achieved harmony among his compositions. Tofino died in 2008. The image that we see here was a poster he designed for a book fair. And here is a colorful poster for a theater festival that occurred in 1973. Antonio Martorell, commonly called El Maestro, was a printmaker, painter, draftsman, installation artist, stage and costume designer, writer, illustrator, and teacher. He was born in San Juan in 1939. After studying diplomacy at Georgetown University, he decided to change professional course. In 1961, with a scholarship from the Ferre Foundation, he studied painting and drawing in Madrid. On his return to Puerto Rico, he began a printmaking apprenticeship under the direction of Lorenzo Homar at the Graphic Arts Workshop of the Institute of Puerto Rican Culture. In 1968, he established the Alacran Studio, one of Puerto Rico's first independent print studios. He has taught printmaking in Puerto Rico, Colombia, Argentina, and Mexico. His prints and paintings communicate his exceptional creative talent. He is recognized for figurative compositions, which show portraiture, the written word, references to theater, and a playful nature of all aspects of life. This is an image which promotes the Folk Art Center. Martorell uses symbolic imagery, including a rooster. The rooster is important in Puerto Rican culture. Cockfighting has been practiced for 400 years in Puerto Rico, and it is considered an integral part of the island's folklore. Though it's a controversial sport, cockfighting is so much a part of the island's culture that many artesanos, craftsmen, and artists create pieces inspired by or depicting elements of cockfighting. And let's look at this poster to promote an artisan's fair. It includes delicate, colorful calligraphy, as well as an image of a saint figure. The carving of small wooden santos, or saints, is one of the traditional crafts of Puerto Rico. The santeros, or saint makers, trace their craft to the 16th century. These small, compact figures were created by self-taught rural carvers whose figures were objects of devotion as manifestations of the saint's spirit. Today's carvers represent a link to Puerto Rico's past and are valued as living symbols of the island's cultural heritage. And here is a poster in Marcherell design to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Asociación Puertorriqueña de Profesores Universitarios. Jose Alcea is a printmaker, painter, and teacher who was born in Ponce, Puerto Rico in 1928. In 1957, he entered the workshop of the Institute of Puerto Rican Culture, where he worked under the direction of Lorenzo Omar as his assistant, and he worked there until 1965. Since that date, he taught in the Puerto Rico School of Plastic Arts. His prints consist of liner cuts, wood cuts, silk screens, and dry points, and he's won many prizes and exhibited throughout the United States, Puerto Rico, the Caribbean, and Spain. His prints often include literary texts or other words, and they deal with social and historic subjects. The image that is shown here was designed to disseminate information about the fifth national festival of the Giro. The Giro is a gourd which is hollowed out in order to create a percussion instrument. Notches are carved out on one side, and it is played by rubbing a stick along those notches. The instrument is commonly used in Latin American music, such as salsa. Alicea also designed this poster promoting an exhibit titled Humanismo and Folklore, which features a monochromatic background and a colorful figure at the center. And here is a beautiful poster designed for the centennial of the Parque de Bombas in Ponce, Puerto Rico. The building here is a historic fire station and one of the most easily recognized landmarks on the island. Alicea created this striking image for the sixth festival of the Bomba y Plena, which was held in Fajardo. And lastly, here is one designed for an exhibit on the topic of black culture in the Caribbean. Printmaker, graphic designer, painter, draftsman, and teacher, Sambolin graduated with a BFA from the University of Puerto Rico in 1970. 
1983, he completed his master's degree at the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. In the 1970s, with Rafael Rivera Rosa and René Pietri, he founded the Tire Bija after having founded other studios, such as King K. The Tire Bija triggered a great transformation in Puerto Rican graphic arts. Sambalin worked at the University of Puerto Rico, where he made commemorative posters and other materials for campus activities, and he taught in the schools of architecture and public communication. His posters can be found in many important collections. His work is often distinguished by its lettering, as well as open lines and clean stylized designs. Here we see an image that Sambalin designed, which includes patriotic Im imagery and a strong political message, freedom for Puerto Rican revolutionaries. Similarly, this image promotes the Workers' Socialist Movement, a Puerto Rican democratic socialist revolutionary organization, which was formed in 1982 and was dedicated to the self-organization and self-emancipation of the working class in Puerto Rico, as well as international solidarity with wor worker struggles worldwide. It is usually known as the MST, which supports a socialist and independent Puerto Rico. Sambolin's strong messages can be seen in the screen print which is titled Super Puerto, Colonialismo, Piaje, Veneno. It provides strong objections to the planned construction of the oil superport in the 1970s. We see a wooden window which is latched at the bottom. Each pane of glass has a different message. Three of them show the death of marine fauna, vegetation, and people. The superport project was ultimately suspended. Printmaker and painter, Rosa first studied art under Rafael Tufino. His training took place in Devetco and at the Campeche Studio and Gallery run by Domingo Garcia in San Juan. His training in graphic arts continued under Lorenzo Omar at the Graphic Arts Workshop of the Institute of Puerto Rican Culture. From 1973 to 1986, Rosa was the director of that workshop where he mastered the silk screening technique. In his work, he captures images and subjects associated with the popular culture of Puerto Rico. These include politics, religion, and bar life, which he presents in a very humorous manner. In the 70s, he developed a new style in which he integrated text into his compositions, and the text became one of the graphic elements. In 1998, he was honored at the 12th San Juan Biennial of Latin American and Caribbean prints. His paintings have visual parallels with his graphic art and often are characterized by an emphasis on the underlining drawing and by the sharpness of lines. This image that you see here commemorates the 100th anniversary of the abolition of slavery in Puerto Rico. And just as I mentioned previously, this image incorporates intricate letterwork into the background of the image. In this poster, Rosa incorporates more color along with an image of a clown to advertise an artisan's fair in 1972. Painter, printmaker, digital artist, graphic designer, and teacher, Rivera Rosa studied with the artists of the 50s generation at the Campeche Studio and Gallery and with Lorenzo Homar at the Graphic Arts Workshop of the Institute of Puerto Rican Culture. In 1970, Rivera Rosa and Nelson Sambolin founded the Tire Vija, which produced an impressive output of political and protest posters. He completed his BFA at the University of Puerto Rico and his MFA at the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. And then he taught at the University of Puerto Rico and the Puerto Rico School of Plastic Arts. He has been producing narrative work which address social and political issues, and often his works are reflective and depict imaginary mythological characters. So prior to this slide, we've seen posters that were produced mainly during the 1960s and 1970s. The one here is, was designed by Rivera Rosa in 2007. The Festival Casals takes place annually, and it is a classical musical event, which is celebrated to honor the musician Pablo Casals. 
And what's really great is that I've mentioned in part one of this series that William J. Dane, the librarian who purchased many of these posters and discovered them for our collection, uh, used to travel to Puerto Rico almost annually. So, for instance, in this example, we also have the program that went along with the, the poster for this musical event. So for some of our items, there are accompanying materials which provide more of a context and create a great historical record of, of why these posters were produced and the importance of some of these images and the importance of these events in Puerto Rico. In this image, Rivera Rosa brings attention to another musical event. Note the way he uses the combination of just a few colors to create this image. Luis Cajiga is a painter and printmaker. In 1952, with the help of Ines Mendoza de Muñoz Marin, wife of the governor of Puerto Rico, Cajiga moved to San Juan where he studied with Lorenzo Humar and Rafael Tufino at the Graphic Arts Workshop of the División de Educación en la Comunidad de Verco. He studied perspective under painter Fran Cervoni. From 1960 to 1962, he assisted Homar at the Graphic Arts Workshop of the Institute of Puerto Rican Culture. In 1975, he earned a master's degree in education at the Inter-American University of Puerto Rico. And since 1979, he had his own gallery in San Juan. He became known for his local color painting in which he depicts scenes and landscapes of urban life, principally in old San Juan. Here is a poster he produced for fellow artist Juan Rosado. Ramos is a painter and graphic artist. He studied the, at the Escuela de Artes Plásticas de Puerto Rico between 1970 and 1975, and he obtained a BFA in painting and silk screening. He worked as a graphic artist and later became director of the Graphic Arts Workshop from the Department of Cultural Activities at the University of Puerto Rico. He was employed as a silkscreen professor at the San Juan Art Students League. During his long career as an artist, he received many awards and honors, and he participated in many, many exhibitions in Puerto Rico, the United States, Venezuela, Mexico, Germany, and Cuba. Here is a poster he designed in order to promote a musical event. And this poster was produced for a spring festival in 1978. Here is a poster Ramos created for a play. Take a look at the topography in his works because it changes in every example. The last example by Ramos is a piece made for a guitar performance for musician Narcisco Yepes, who was one of the finest classical guitarists of the 20th century. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you will be able to join us next week, the same day and time, to learn more about a collection of Devetco posters produced in San Juan and to see some examples of prints that have been donated to the collection. And remember that these recordings will always be available to view at any time on the library's YouTube and Facebook pages. This program originally aired on September 30th, 2020. I do urge you, if you haven't yet, today is the deadline for the completion of the census. If you haven't yet filled out your census because less than 50% of New Yorkers have completed the census, do visit 2020census.gov and fill yours out today. Thank you.